Hey, this is Dustin Robert from CMFT, and you're watching Slasher Pepper. Enjoy. <laughs> hey, you guys, Slasher Pepper, and welcome to another interview. Today, I'm going to be interviewing Dustin Robert. How are you doing? How are you guys doing? Doing good. Awesome. I'm glad to have you on the show. Happy um, to be here. So my first question was, uh, how has 2020 been for you? Have you gotten any new hobbies? Uh, 2020 has been kind of uh, like a roller coaster of ups and downs. Um, obviously, um, with the pandemic being what it is, it's just been survival of the fittest. Yeah. Uh, is, um, I was really lucky that uh, that we were able to do uh, the first uh, Corey Taylor record at that time, um, kind of last minute. And then within doing that, uh, to answer the next part of your question, I actually got back into biking recently. Wow. So I have, uh, I actually just took my, I have a six-year-old daughter and we just went to an indoor uh, bike park yesterday uh, with another friend of ours, obviously social distance, everybody wears masks and all that stuff here. It's pretty strict, but uh, you can kind of mingle and uh, go to other places that are allowed. The place is massive. I mean, there's 10 people in there. You won't see them if they're all in there. It's a huge warehouse. So I, I took her there yesterday and then uh, I do uh, trail riding and, uh, and uh, bike park riding on a dirt jumper. So that's stuff I did when I was a kid, skateboarding and BMX was a huge part of my childhood. So it was kind of cool to get back into it again and just be like, Oh, I remember this. This was fun. <laughs> you know? Awesome. That is. So yeah, good thing you got that, uh, that back in your life then. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it keeps you in shape and if you're not on the road playing and touring, then you're just kind of sitting here and a lot of people I don't understand. The rest of my life is restaurants. If I'm not, uh, if I'm not playing the drums or on the road, I run restaurants at home. So uh, wow, awesome. that's some place to, to not be active at. Cause you just become a balloon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. uh, then my next question is uh, how did you and Corey Taylor meet? Uh, Corey and I met on tour. Um, we originally met briefly in 04. Um, I did a stone sour show in my hometown, uh, sold out show for them. Um, and it was the same night that some things happened uh, with some past members of the Stone Sour camp. So when I met him again in 06, when Walls of Jericho was doing the, uh, the Family Values Tour with Corn and Deftones and obviously Stone Sour, um, we met again and we connected. And, I, and then throughout that tour, I go, hey, remember this time? And he's like, oh. And then since then, we've just been friends. Awesome. That's really cool. Yep. Um, and then, of course, great job on the first album, CMF, uh, CMFT. Great Thanks, stuff. Um, Fun record. And then uh, you guys got CMF2 coming up. Can you tell us more about that? Can't tell you much other than that, you know, it's it, Corey never stops writing and never stops bouncing ideas and, you know, telling us this and showing us that. So uh, CMF2 is, to me, well on its way uh, to becoming a reality here in the next couple of years, I would say. I, don't quote me on that though. I'm just the drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to be. <laughs> cool. Well, very exciting. I'm looking forward to that. And of course the, the tour coming up then whenever, whenever that happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this all, all this stuff uh, settles down. And then yeah. uh, more yeah. random question. Uh, if you could rid the world of one thing, what would it be? If I could rid the world of one thing, what would it be? Borders. Oh, why is that? Uh, because borders aren't real to me. Borders are just a bunch of, you know, things made up that are owned by countries. At the end of the day, what does any of it even mean any, anymore? You know, back when I remember, you know, talking to some of the older guys in the touring world uh, when they first started going to Europe in the early 90s before the EU happened and how they'd have to cross every border and all this different stuff. And it's just like, what do we have borders for? If there was no borders there would be no wars. If there was no borders, there would be no, there were so many things that would happen if we didn't have borders. Look at what's happening in our country right now. It's all because of borders and money and power. It's all a bunch of BS. So uh, it sounds very uh, liberal of me, but it's not the case. It's just when you travel so much, you just realize, wow, these borders are just here to take your money and to keep people in a certain place for other only reason other than to take their money. You get yeah. rid of borders. A lot of uh, a lot of issues in this world, and John Lennon said it himself. You know, imagine that. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's now, a, that's a good answer for sure. And then, uh, yeah, I've heard so many stories about like different places and different cultures, you know. And then um, it's always kind of you always kind of connect it to like a you, different land. You know, what was that? You live in Germany, right? Uh, no, I live next to it in Holland. Oh, you live in Holland? Even crazier, because then how many borders are on Holland? I mean, there's France, there's Germany. There's what Luxembourg is on there somewhere. Yeah, Belgium, I mean, Belgium, all those different borders. And back before everything was open, you had to cross these crazy security lines and all this other different stuff. Not that long ago, you yeah. know. And it's meet people there for other only purposes other than just money and control. For sure, yeah. A good answer, original answer too. Um, and then, well, obviously you would get rid of borders, but um, if you ruled the world, what would it look like? I don't know. It'd probably look like some crazy, like punk rock, hippie utopia. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> It'd be like everybody would just do whatever they need to do as long as you're not killing and raping people, you know, then I don't know. That seems crazy to me, but I think the world would just be a peaceful place if I had any real control over it. But, you know. Who's to say if people want peace or not? Right, right. Well, I, I can say for myself that I would definitely prefer you to to have you as a leader uh, of the world. It would look a lot like a lot better place. <laughs> yeah, a lot of less crap going on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and less borders. And less borders. And then over here, I have some musicians you can choose between. Um, so Motorhead or Metallica. I'm, a, you know, that's a tough one because if there wasn't Motorhead, there wouldn't be Metallica. Right. But if there was Metallica in my life, I would have never have become any sort of like metal drummer ever, ever. Metallica is like, that's my band. That's the band that I heard when I was a child. And I went, I want to play like that. Like I heard, uh, I think the first thing I ever heard was Master of Puppets. Right. And yeah. Blown away. Like this is so incredibly heavy. This is so incredibly fast, you know, so that's a tough one. I think that's a draw to me. I don't think, I think, I don't think I can choose between the, either one of those. Well, I asked this question before, I think to like Alex story. Um, uh -huh. Do you know him? I know who he is. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and, and he was like, um, he went for Motorhead and I would go for Motorhead myself because that's my favorite band ever. Uh, but you said even the Metallica guys would go for Motorhead, and then I was like, "Yeah, that's kind of weird to think of it that way." But it's that's it, actually true. <laughs> without Motorhead, one hundred percent, and without Venom and all those bands, there would be no Metallica. Right, like, exactly. It, so it's like you can't like to me. It's a draw because Motorhead is Motorhead, but Metallica is Metallica, and like I'm not choosing either one of them. I'm just gonna go like this and go. I'm gonna take both. Right. <laughs> Uh, and then Alice Cooper or Ozzy Osbourne? Ozzy Osbourne. Um, I like the early Alice Cooper stuff when they sounded like the Doors when they were hanging out with them. Um, right. I do, but to me, Ozzy, you know, I remember being a young kid and hearing Diary of a Madman and just being like, whoa, you know. My parents were like rock and rollers when I was a child, a small child. So uh, hearing all that stuff and Ozzy throughout the years has just continued to be just a mainstay in the metal world i mean he's the freaking he's the the biggest of them, the best of the best you know so i'm more of an ozzy fan than alice cooper any day awesome uh and then there was uh there was another one nickelback or imagine dragons do i have to <laughs> <laughs> just choose the less bad one <laughs> Because it's hard because if you listen to Nickelback, like if you really listen to Nickelback, like they write good songs, their records sound incredible. Like if you're into like, if you understand production value and like sonically their records sound great, they really do. And, but then they're Nickelback, you know, and it's nothing against Nickelback. I, I thoroughly like some of their stuff. I'll admit it. Now you can take away some of the scene points away from me if you want, but they're, they write some songs. <laughs> But I'll say the same thing about Imagine Dragons too. Imagine Dragons took a very innovative way of, of writing and recording music and made it mainstream. Um, 
whether you can say that they took from gold, you know, from Coldplay or they took from this band or blah, 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 blah. That's irrelevant. They, they were an American band that said, we love all this different stuff and we're not going to, we're going to take the non-traditional norms of music and make it this. So I don't know, it's tough, but I, I think if I had to listen to both bands on a regular basis, I would rather listen to Imagine Dragons just because it's a different, it's a change. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, you do have a point there because um, I'm a big fan of like soundtracks from the early 2000s and yeah, you had like um, the Punisher soundtrack. And on that album, I was like, oh, this is actually a pretty good song. And then I looked on the back and then all of a sudden it's slow motion by Nickelback. And I'm like, like it's, it's actually <laughs> not that bad. <laughs> If you think about There's a lot of like internet moments that Nickelback have had where like they'll release a new song and then like Lamb Goat or some crazy like hardcore, uh, you know, publication will just be like, I like Nickelback all of a sudden because they'll release this heavy ass song and you'll be like, yo, that kind of slaps. Like, <laughs> but then you'll Nickelback, but like, who cares? You know, who cares about Nickelback? Like if you write a good song, you write a good song. Uh, same thing with Imagine Dragons. If you write a good song, you write a good song. I can't right. hate on But I'd, like I said, I'd rather listen to Imagine Dragons on a more regular basis than Nickelback, for sure. Awesome. And then um, what are some of your favorite horror movies? I'm a kid of the 80s, so any of the original, like the Nightmare on Elm Streets, the Jasons, um, uh, any of those are like staples when I was a kid. I remember watching all the, all the Friday the 13th movies when I was a little kid and just being so scared of <laughs> any in the woods you know i mean your 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 brothers and sisters cousins whoever it was they're always playing tricks on you yeah <laughs> stuff was crazy scary and i think that that stuff to this day really holds up um the modern stuff obviously all the rob zombie stuff is always great oh yeah um, any of the japanese stuff i don't like the japanese remakes but i like the original japanese like more of the like psychological horror stuff Like, um, so I like some of that stuff too, but the gore stuff I kind of got away from as I got older, I, I think. So, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a big fan of like the gore stuff, uh, to be honest. You're I not a big, like, um, the thing like John Carpenter's the thing, oh, the classic, classic movie. For Couldn't sure. watch the remake. And I'm like, they're doing that. It's like remaking the karate kid. You can't remake the karate kid. Just can't do it. <laughs> Just can't do it. Yeah. The, and then it's like all cgi and stuff so it's like you know yeah the thing like <laughs> they they took it too far with the cgi stuff remember like the final destination movies coming out i remember first i was being like holy crap this is crazy how they filmed it but then it was so gory you know that you kind of like you're like okay i get it you know a log just went through a guy from a truck <laughs> ridiculous you know So, but I like more the, the, the Friday the 13th, the, the, and the, and the nightmare on Elm streets for me were like, those were like the OGs. Those were the ones that scared the crap out of me when I was a kid. I'm sure that my kid is going to feel the same way when I make her watch them. because I will. Um, those are just really my go-tos when I watch horror movies, especially old horror movies. Awesome. Yeah. Those for me as well. I post about those all day, every day on Instagram. <laughs> And uh, yeah, then it's so crazy. Like in back in the 80s, you would just have like toys for these serial killers that are killing kids. And then they right. make and toys about that. Like in New York, in the, in, the, uh, in the subway, some little person is dressing like Chucky from <laughs> Child Play. What? Like if some little person, I don't care what, a, a child or whatever, if you're on the subway of New York, especially right now, and you come rolling in the subway, dress like Chucky, I'm going to kick you. Like that is <laughs> logical shit. Like you shouldn't be doing that to anybody. That is like, you get yourself killed doing that stuff. But I saw <laughs> ask some girl and he was like going after people. And I'm like, dude, what's wrong with you? <laughs> That's like that psychological stuff that they did back in the 80s that just isn't really relevant i think or really prevalent um with today's horror movies you know just like that scary cheap fx effects that you will have it's just it's not there anymore right and then um my last question uh, where do you hope to see yourself in 10 years 
probably sitting right here on this couch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, hopefully we're, you know, four or five records into some Corey Taylor solo stuff. And I don't ever plan on slowing down musically. I plan on playing for as many people as I can play for if I have time. And I do a bunch of other stuff besides music. I'm involved with food and restaurants. I'm involved in all kinds of different stuff. So the path that I'm on right now is I'm very happy with, and I hopefully I just stay right on this path. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. I hope so too. Me too. Thanks. You know, (laughs) maybe you'll actually be on the same couch in 10 years, just 10 years further. Yeah, I mean, I've been on for almost 10 years now, so I don't Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Is there anything you would like to add to the interview? No, nothing. Just thanks for the support. Uh, If you haven't bought the the CMFT album, I suggest you do. It's a super fun album to uh, listen to. New albums out. It's probably one of the most ridiculous videos I've ever been a part of, let alone watched. It's ridiculous. Uh, And uh, hope to see everybody out on the road. For now, stay safe. Wear a mask. Yeah. (laughs) Hopefully I'll see you on the road soon then. Soon you will. Alright, alright, oh if you start to be to be the light You again, you again, I know you're coming later, damn Listen up, listen up